Muscle tissues Muscle tissues are specialized tissues which provide movement of the whole body, its parts and inner organs. It results from construction, shortening of muscle cells or fibers as a result of contraction of their special structures. Actin and myosin myofilaments or myofibrils. There are three types of muscle tissues. Smooth consists of cells. And two type of striated muscle. Skeletal and cardiac. Smooth muscle originated from Mesenheim in embryogenesis. It located inside the tubular organs like intestine, stomach, urinary bladder or ureter or blood vessels, especially arteries. Smooth muscle tissue consists of cells. Smooth muscle cells have a spindle shape with rod-shaped nucleus in the center and organelles at the periphery, mostly at the poles of the nucleus. The size varied between 20 and 500 microns. So these big smooth muscle cells appeared in uterus during pregnancy. There are actin filaments constantly which connected with dense plate located under cytolemma and dense bodies inside cytoplasm. Actin filaments are located longitudinally to the smooth muscle cell axis. During constriction, during excitation, mesin filaments appeared they connected with actin filaments and actin filaments sliding along mesin filaments muscle cells became shorter and thicker this process of construction initiate calcium ions release they store in smooth endoplasmic reticulum and its fragments cavioles located under cytoplasm cytolemma at the periphery of cell this is a nice color picture of smooth muscle tissue in 3D you see smooth muscle cells located, packaged densely in 3D in longitudinal section and transverse section. Every cell have a road shape nucleus in the middle and covered by basal membrane and endomysium, thin layer of loose connective tissue with small blood vessels which feed in the muscle cells and supply them this oxygen. There are also enough 
fibers belong to autonomic nerve system, sympathetic or parasympathetic. They regulate the activity and contraction of smooth muscle tissue. They don't reach every cell. They stimulate excited few cells. But excited cells convey excitation to other neighboring cells through the intercellular communications, gap junctions or nexuses, which convey the beam of uh, the flow of ions, which excite in neighboring cells. At the transfer section, you see the round shape cells, like cycles, pink, this blue point in the middle. If the section go through the middle of muscle cells, through the nucleus, if section go through the peripheral part of cells, you see the section like that smaller pink round sections. This is a micro photogram of smooth muscle tissue at longitudinal section. You see long cells with the road shaped nuclei in the middle. A transverse section, you see the round pink sections, and the biggest of them. I have the road shaped nuclei, road and the section. There are two unique small muscles in iris of the eye. Dilated papilla muscle and sphincter papilla, papilla muscle. They develop from nerve tube, so have neural origin. Striated skeletal muscle, much more difficult, complicated in structure and mechanisms of contraction. I explain you the structure of skeletal muscle from organ level to molecular level. Striated skeletal muscle consists of muscle fibers. Muscle fibers consist of myosimplasts and satellite cells at the periphery of simplasts. Striated skeletal muscle developed from mitomes of somates of mesoderm in embryogenesis. When mesenheim cells converted to myoblasts and they fuse together and produce muscle tubules and then myosimplasts and myoblasts also convert to myosatellitocytes. This is a picture of striated skeletal muscle fibers of the tongue at low magnification you see the skeletal muscle fibers at longitudinal and transverse section at high magnification at longitudinal section you see the individual striated muscle fibers they have uh, many road shaped nuclei at the periphery and somewhere here you can find my satellitocytes, small stem cells like a reserve for muscle fibers. This is a skeletal muscle tissue in 3D. You see the muscle fibers going in parallel. They quite thin up to 100 microns thick 
in diameter. But the were long, many centimeters long, as long as the muscle itself. Every muscle fiber consists of myosin plasts. You see at the periphery the road trait nuclei. Every muscle fiber covered by sarcolemma, meat from Greece called sarcos. So the cytolemma called sarcolemma, sarcoplasm called it, it's uh, cytoplasm called sarcoplasm smooth endoplasmic reticulum called sarcoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria called sarcosomes and uh, every fiber covered by basal membrane and between sarcolemma and basal membrane located uh, satellite cells, myosatellitocytes, the stem or cumbell cells can proliferate, fuse and build the new muscle fibers after the injury, if then it necessary. And between muscle fibers there is a loose connective tissue layers called endomysium. There located the blood vessels which feed in the muscle tissue and supply it by oxygen. You can see also nerve fibers belong to somatic part of nerve system so you can regulate it by your mind and through it you can regulate the contraction and functions of skeletal muscle nerve fibers connected with every skeletal muscle fiber every skeletal muscle fiber has nerve muscle junctions and get nerve impulses through the acetylcholine release. So nuclei in myosin plants at the periphery and in the center special organelles, contractile organelles, myofibrils. You see that longitudinal section and a transfer section, like dots. There are several hundreds of myofibrils in every muscle fiber. You see it at longitudinal and transfer section. Every myofibril in regular it contain dark and light discs. So in all myofibril light discs located at the same levels. Light against light and dark against dark discs or bands. It's the reason of striation, transfer striation of every muscle fiber. And it's the reason why this muscle tissue called striated. Through the middle of light disc going that line or telephragm. Fragment of my fibril between two Z lines called sarcomer. This is a structural and functional unit of myofibril. So myofibril it's like a long chain of sarcomers. Myofibril thickness about one and a half microns by they 
as long as a muscle fiber so as long as muscle reach to many centimeters long so sarcomer a contractile unit of skeletal muscle these are sarcomers at higher magnification this is one sarcomer under electron microscope you see two Z lines and this is schematic drawing of sarcomer demonstrated that it consists of two types of myofilaments thick myosin filaments blue in color and thin actin filaments pink in color and these green Z lines the borders of sarcomer Z line going through the middle of light disc Do you see that light band or disc band it consists of thin actin filaments only duck band or a band consist of both myosin and actin filaments at the periphery of the discs so actin filaments going between mesin filaments another and connected with Z line this light band called E band from what isotropic in polarizing light under special microscope A band mean anisotropic in the middle of A band you can see the light band called H zone here only myosin filaments located so every sarcomer contains one A band and two halves of E bands this is the same sarcomer under electron microscope and this is uh, part of skeletal muscle fiber under electron microscope myofibrils going in parallel myofibrils consist of sarcomeres you see that lines going through all sarcomeres through all myofibrils you see dark against dark bands and light against light bands and you see the H zone in the middle it's lighter it's in the middle of A band and zone of overlapping see this zone of overlapping you can suggest that zone of overlapping in this sarcomer much wider so this sarcomer in construction phase and this sarcomer in the phase of relaxation and you see smooth endoplasmic reticulum or sarcoplasmic reticulum between myofibrils this is one sarcomer under high magnification of electron microscope you see that lines and light bands two halves of light bands and this is dark 
A-band and you see the zone of overlapping where actin filaments go in between myosin filaments zone of overlapping and in the middle there is zone of H zone where only myosin filaments located at very high magnification you see myosin filament and two actin filaments and you can see the bridges between myosin and actin filaments. Molecular organization of sarcomer. You see blue Z lines consist of protein alpha actinin, green actin filaments, thin filaments connected by one end with Z lines and free ends going between myosin filaments and these uh, thick myosin filaments and you see the heads which will make bridges connections with actin filaments. This is a H band. This is a A band. Zone of overlapping. And half of I E discs. Light. Two halves of light discs. And this is mesophragm in the middle of sarcomer and A band and H band M line molecular organization of thin actin filaments it consists of chains of line green globules of protein actin. Some of these globules have the binding sites for mysin. These are fiber-like tropomyosin molecules. They close the binding sites of actin. There is also troponin complex consists of three globular proteins, one of them and connected with calcium ions. Thick myosin filaments it's a bundle of myosin molecules. Every molecule consists of two heads and two tails. build the helix, double helix. Every head of myosin molecule contain actin, green actin binding sites and red ATP, adenosine 3, three phosphate binding sites. Several hundreds of myosin molecules build the myosin filament but the heads located to directed to the surface to outside of filaments to connect these actin filaments now I will try to describe you the molecular mechanism of contraction. This is a myosin filaments. The heads can connect filaments binding sites. After connection ATP 
destroyed to adenosine diphosphate and phosphate and it provides energy for movement of heart so it move and push the actin filament on 5 nanometers distance first calcium ion this yellow connected with tropomyosin complex and it move and open the binding sites of actin this myosin the head of myosin connected this actin the this green ATP destroyed and it provide energy to m- movement of the head of mesin and it push the actin filament then it bind another molecule of uh, of ATP and disconnected this actin during the contraction the actin filaments sliding between myosin filaments to the middle of sarcomer as a result the E band became shorter the zone of overlapping became wider and H zone also became shorter and the distance between Z lines became much shorter and sarcomer itself became shorter then all sarcomers became shorter and Z lines going through all sarcomers and connected with sarcolemma and the distance between these points of sarcolemma uh, decreased and all muscle fibers became shorter and thicker and the whole muscle became shorter and thicker this is individual straight skeletal muscle fiber and this is individual nerve fiber and nerve terminal nerve muscle junction which conveys the nerve impulse signal for contraction to the muscle fiber this figure demonstrate the piece of muscle fiber in 3D this violet cytolemma or sarcolemma this green myofibrils going in parallel this green myofilaments myofibril is the big bundle of myofilaments both actin and myosin do you see z lines sarcomers there are two types of tubules t tubules or from the word transfers the kernel like invaginations of sarcolemma these tubules going to the deeper part through the whole muscle fiber between myofibrils and L longitudinal tubules belong to smooth endoplasmic reticulum or sarcoplasmic reticulum these tubules going 
mostly longitudinal, but there's many anastomoses between. They are going between myofibrils. They have cisterns, the store of calcium ions. These terminal cisterns of sarcoplasmic reticulum located both side of T-tubules. So the three structures together, one tubules and two cisterns called traits. These traits located around the zone of overlapping, so between light and dark discs. So, then nerve impulse come in, the sarcolemma exciting, the wave of depolarization going along the tubules, reach the cisterns, the calcium canal open, and calcium ion release and connect it, bind this troponin complex calcium binding sites and troponin complex move, tropomyosin fibers and open the myosin binding sites at actin and heads of myosin will connect it these myosin binding sites and push the actin filaments during the relaxation the calcium ion reuptake and accumulate it in cisterns again. There are two types of muscle fibers, red, white, and also there is intermediate. Red muscle fibers, they are red because contain much pigment inclusions, myoglobin. Myoglobin dark red in color, like hemoglobin of erythrocytes, and can also accumulate oxygen. There are few mefibrils, but many mitochondria in red muscle fibers. They work slowly, but do not tie it for a long time. White muscle fibers have a big diameter, many myofibrils and glycogen, but less mitochondria and less myoglobin. They contract rapidly and strongly, but get tight rapidly. Muscle as an organ, all 600 muscles, individual muscles, you have studied in the course of human anatomy have the same plan of structure and the same mechanism of contraction. So they covered by dense connective tissue or fascia called epimysium. It consists of bundles of muscles covered by loose connective tissue Pyramidium and every individual skeletal muscle fiber covered by thin connective tissue layer. Tendon formation in endomysium covering all individual muscle fiber there are collagen fibrils at the ends of muscle fibers and muscle itself. This collagen fibril fuse together and going in parallel and build bundles of collagen fibers with fibrocytes between this is a tendon after injury of skeletal muscle 
it can regenerate because myocytolytocytes Campbell cells they can proliferate convert it to meblasts meblasts fuse and produce the muscle tubules and they grow in and convert to muscle fibers Straighted cardiac muscle opposite to skeletal muscle consists of cells, cardiomyocytes. They are interconnected by intercellular disc to functional muscle fibers. These anastomoses between and there are single rod shape nuclei in the center of cells and organelles located at the periphery. This is a figure of striated cardiac muscle. You see long muscle cells, cardiomyocytes, connected by their ends, these intercalated discs it visible on the light microscope like the transverse dark lines and you see also the anastomosis between muscle fibers functional muscle fibers and also single nuclei in the center of cells this is cardiomyocyte in 3D, the schematic drawing contain much more mitochondria and no traits because endoplasmic reticulum contain no big terminal cisterns and few but thick T tubules. And this is an intercalated disc between two cardiomyocytes. And this is one, this is piece of another. This is cardiac muscle cell. You see my fibrils going in parallel. The not so pronounced, very thin as compared to skeletal muscle. The reason why cardiac muscle not so strong as a skeletal but between you see huge amount of mitochondria 20 times more than in skeletal muscle mitochondria provide energy ATP which necessary to for contraction of cardiac muscle it should contract or all the day around, every second during the whole life and should not tie it and stop. This muscle innervated by autonomic nerve system so it's also involuntary like smooth muscle. These uh, two cardiomyocytes connected with intercalated disc under electron microscope it looks waving and desmosomes visible. They connected strongly the cardiomyocytes and these myofibrils and a huge amount of mitochondria between as also kernels of loose endoplasmic reticulum. And this is schematic drawing and the same under electron microscope. You see one cardiomyocyte and another cardiomyocyte. Intercalated disc between and these desmosomes. My fibrils, not so pronounced, but huge amount of mitochondria between and this uh, section of canals of smooth endoplasmic reticulum.
in embryogenesis, this tissue, striated cardiac muscle tissue, developed from visceral layer of splanchnotome of mesoderm. There is special contractile cells belong to the epithelial cells, so they call myoepithelial cells. They derived from ectoderm, so they can be found in terminal secretor portions of glands. You see the yellow secretory cells, glandular cells, and pink myoepithelial cells around under basal membrane. These cells can uh, have long processes and then they contract, they push the secret from uh, secretory portions to ducts. These cells can be found in cellular glands, memory glands and sweat glands of skin. All these glands derived from ectoderm.